Y'all, it's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 8, Episode 9 Review. Um, before I get started, I want to let you all know that I have started my Snapchat. So if you all want to follow me on there, my username is Kyries99. That's K-Y-R-E-S-E-9-9. The number 9, 9, 9. I'll have exclusive content on there. I did a, a food tutorial uh, yesterday and just uh, story time on there. I'll do a... Uh, makeup tutorial tips and all types of stuff on there so follow me on snapchat once again kyrese 99 k-y-r-e-s-e 99 if you want to follow me so let's get into this review so we start off this week's episode with she man woman hater <laughs> coming to candy coated studios or whatever to clear things up with candy about you know when they were all outside talking about um the phaedra and tired situation she may have one really saying nothing it was basically more so phaedra and portia that was talking about the situation so uh she comes in she talks to candy whatever she's giving her side of the story and carmen and don juan immediately start going in on fey fey and portia and they're talking about how phaedra out here going to get boob jobs got on brand new louboutins and she got a brand new weave and they paid time his motherfucking money and Don Juan reads Portia because he like, how you sitting up here talking about somebody? You don't even know where the underworld, underground railroad is. You so goddamn dumb. You don't even know how many uh, days there is in a fucking year. So how you sitting outside somebody's event talking about them? And so she made a woman hater doesn't want Don Juan to talk about her friend because she wouldn't talk about none of his friends. And so they basically just, you know, there really wasn't any conclusion to that part of the story. So then uh, Ty goes to Phaedra's office to have their meeting. And Ty got his backpack on, honey, because he has come to collect his motherfucking coins. And so they sit down at a conference room table. And uh, in her green screen, Phaedra says how, you know, how can I owe him money when I don't even have a fucking fitness DVD? I'm like, girl, which one is? You keep on going back and forth on whether or not you owe this man money. You are just a liar. She just lies all the fucking time. And they catch her in her lies. And she just continues to do the shit. So, um, Ty tells his side of the story and, you know, how things were down. And then once again, in her green screen, Phaedra's caught talking shit. And she says, poor Ty, he must be going through the couch for spare change since I heard his L.A. TV projects have dried up. Or maybe his weekly allowance from candy isn't keeping him afloat. And I'm like, well, what kind of shit is that for you to say about this girl husband when y'all supposed to be sitting up here trying to work things out? Like, why are you throwing shade to not only her husband, but to her as well? Why are you talking about her? Now you calling this girl a so-called sugar mama that she over here taking care of her man and he a well-kept husband and shit? And I'm like, Faith, you can't talk about nobody motherfucking husband when you sit up here and married a nigga fresh out of jail, a fresh felon out of jail, just Finally, stop clutching his fucking ass cheeks. My nigga, you was fucking, he even said you, he, that nigga was fresh out of jail. You was fucking this nigga on a motherfucking mattress and a motherfucking projects, my nigga. You can't talk about nobody. At least Ty got actual paycheck stubs. Your nigga was over here making fake paycheck stubs on a motherfucking computer and printing that shit out in your motherfucking house. You was up here dating a man that was sitting up here robbing people of their fucking pension checks, owing them millions of fucking dollars, and you got the nerve to talk about somebody's husband. Girl, you better go to church and repent. Bitch, please. So, um, then she says, you know, I haven't even seen the video yet. And once again, Bravo bust her ass out. They show footage of her watching the actual fucking video telling Ty, you did a fabulous job. God, why do you lie so much? Like, she's a fucking insane person. Like, she's fucking crazy. So, uh, Ty's like, bitch, you're not about to do me. I came with my book bag and I came with facts and receipts, ma'am. So he pulls out his binder, baby, his trapper keeper. And he's like, look. Here's our contract. Here are the canceled checks. Here is the marketing. Here is this, this, and that. And she just didn't know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, all right. Girl, girl, Phaedra, suck a dick. Anywho, so Portia uh, does the red carpet, is uh, gearing up to do the red carpet uh, at the uh, Emmy Awards for Dish Nation. And she's just so excited about the uh, experience. And um, her sister Lauren is there with her, and she's happy that her sister is there with her. Um, and uh, while they was doing her hair, I was like, "Is well, some, is somebody gonna do Lauren hair too?" Because Lauren edges. 
that 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 pregnancy <laughs> that pregnancy her growth hadn't kicked in with Lauren Edges yet. And I was just like her weave just wasn't right. I was like, as a sister, you would want your sister to be in LA with you looking nice and pretty. That's the least you could do for your sister. Get on her comb too. I mean that edges over here was rough trying to blend in with that silky ass weave. I was like, Lauren girl, no, like Portia, hook your sister up and start having your sister out here looking like she off the motherfucking welfare line. What the fuck is wrong with you? So, um, Portia wonders what she's going to do when Lauren goes on mater maternity leave. She wants, uh, Lauren to basically work as soon as she has the baby. She wants her to come right back to work. And Lauren's like, no, I have a newborn. I want to be at home with my child. I want to take maternity leave. And Portia is not, saying she's not used to, uh, not being Lauren's main priority. And I'm like, well, girl, she's growing up. She has a family. She has a child. Her child's going to come before you. No, it's not going to necessarily come before her job. But anybody that has a motherfucking newborn baby is going to have a mandatory maternity leave after they have their child so they can bond, get a routine going and everything else. Like, you, I would just think outside of a business aspect, because, you know, business is a very tricky situation when you're dealing with family. But just from a sisterly situation, she would give her a little bit more slack. Um, she asked Lauren, has she found her replacement yet? And Lauren's like, no, I'm gonna get to it. And then, so Portia, ba Portia basically feels like her sister being, uh, lax lackadaisical about the uh, whole situation. And I'm like, well, if you know that this girl is having a, seem like a trying pregnancy and she's working for you and everything like that, why don't you try to help her out some? From the clip that I saw online uh, of next week's episode, it comes across to me that, uh, Lauren is more than Portia's personal sense it seems to me like lauren is over there running these fucking businesses for her sister she's tired of doing all this fucking work and not getting the credit for it and then having her sister basically give her her motherfucking ass to kiss so i think she needs to stop talking to her sister all crazy and shit before she be over there having to run them companies on her own and lord knows we all know portia can't run no damn company on her own so kenya's father comes to visit and kenya talks to her dad about dating and finding a man and uh if you follow her on uh, Instagram, she actually was just out of town in the Dominican Republic with that trainer guy from last week's episode. The one I said looked like he just smelled like sweaty balls. So I guess they dating one another. I'm like, girl, you so stupid, girl, because he looked like he just need a bath and his rent paid. But if you like it, I love it. So uh, she says that, you know, her choice of men stems from, you know, basically her fucked up family and that she wants to work on the wounds that she has with her family in order to, you know, help her move forward in her relationships. And I was like, smart young lady. So Candy and Todd meet up with Cynthia and Peter for lunch. And uh, Peter congratulates Candy on the video that she did with Demetria. And Candy brings up Portia and Phaedra talking about her. And she feels that Portia is taking uh, Phaedra's side without getting her side. Uh, she says how she's been so supportive of the things that Portia has done since joining the show, a.k.a. her singing career. She had that song Flatline that came out two years ago. I totally forgot about that bullshit and how, you know, she put her on her play, even though everybody was telling her don't add that, you know, chicken in your play because she can't act, she can't sing. And, you know, she's like, I've been a champion of hers and it's kind of fucked up to me and now that she's become friends with Phaedra. It's pretty much like, fuck me and, you know, you just take Phaedra's side with everything when I've been the one that's been supporting you. And from that aspect, I can see why Candy's feelings would be hurt and why she would, you know, feel something type of way considering that she has been supportive of her and has not really done anything to really offend uh Portia so um Cynthia they started talking about um uh the restaurant business and Cynthia says you know she don't really think it's a good idea her and Peter still having a little mini argument at the table and it's just really awkward uncomfortable and awkward so uh, Cynthia has her customer appreciation party and she wants Kim and Kenya to direct and produce her commercial. And I was like, child, this is not going to fucking work at all. Them two are going to butt heads and it's just going to be a big ass blow up, but I'll be here to watch it. Sure the fuck will. <laughs> So, um, Kim goes up to Candy and tells her that, uh, her Candy Coated Nights project, I mean, uh, products are fucking everything, and then her and her husband got their motherfucking freak on, baby, and I was like, go ahead on, Ray Jean, get, pop that pussy for a real nigga. So, uh, Candy tells Kim what happened, 
between Phaedra and Portia and that whole situation. I'm like, okay, girl, Candy, stop telling everybody what happened and just go straight to the source. Stop running around to the whole group telling them that they talked about you. Just go and confront them hoes. It was funny to me that Phaedra didn't show up to the event because she knew that her ass was going to get called out on her bullshit. But this is what Phaedra does. She runs, she throws stones and then hides behind a motherfucking wall when the shit comes back on her. So, Portia uh, arrived by herself to take all the heat by herself. And, um, she speaks to everyone, including Don Juan. And Don Juan was like, bitch, bye. <laughs> and so, she goes up to Candy. She was like, you know, she man, woman, hater, told me that y'all had a conversation. I basically want to clear things up with you one-on-one. -on -one. And so, her and Ken, uh, Candy go out to talk one-on-one. -on -one, and then Don Juan says, you know what? I think I should go over there and join the conversation. Because I was there. And I know how this bitch is going to sit up here and try to downplay everything. And act like I'm just trying to start shit. So he and Corman then go over there and join in their conversation. Now, this is how I feel about the situation. I feel like Candy's grown enough woman to know the real from some bullshit. She knows how Ken, uh, Phaedra and uh, Portia get down. So even with... Portia not taking responsibility or whatever. She would have saw straight through this. I don't think that uh, Don Juan and Corman had to go over there and join the conversation. They could have just left themselves out of it. So Portia says, you know, she that she refuses to talk about the situation in front of everyone. And um, uh, Kendall's like, well, she bitch, we don't have to talk. <laughs> and so Portia's like, you know, when I got time for this shit, I'm out. So she leaves and she man woman had to follow behind her. It's like, look, y'all need to solve this. And she was like, I'm not doing this in front of everybody. Uh, Candy's doing way too much. And so Cormac comes out and, you know, she tries to talk to Portia. And uh, Portia basically does not want to have any kind of conversation with Cormac because she's the hired help. And she wasn't even there as far as Portia was concerned to even know what the hell was going on. So why is she even involving herself in the situation? So Cormac brings up, well, I mean, shit, y'all was talking about it as a group. So why not talk about it as a group now? And I was like, mm. That's kind of true, but kind of not. So, um, Portia was like, you know what? I got time for this stupid shit and walks off again, man, and calls everybody ghetto. <laughs> I was just like, all oh, y'all stupid. So, uh, they switched to Kenya and Kenya, um, you know, is with her dad. They're taking a walk. She's like, dad, it's good weather today. And daddy's like, no, it ain't. I mean, her daddy was just a fucking Scrooge. He was complaining about everything. I'm like, look, take your old ass back to Houston. So she brings up how when she was 12, she ran away from Detroit. I mean, ran away from Houston to Detroit and how her daddy didn't talk to her for years. Um, and something like that similar happened to me in real life. And I'll talk about that on story time on Snapchat on here. Um, you know, he says how when she did that, it made him feel like he failed as a father and how he wasn't good enough. And that took me back to looking at Kenya and I was just thinking, seeing her with her father, it comes across how she feels. It looks like she doesn't feel good about herself and her father's and her family eyes. Like she doesn't feel good about herself. Like she isn't good enough when it comes to them. And then to have her father turn around and say the same thing, that he doesn't feel like he was good enough. I was like, this is a curse on their family. Not feeling accepted, not feeling wanted, not feeling appreciated. So that's something they need to work through as a family. So she says that, you know, she wishes that she could talk to her mom like she's talking to her dad now. And her daddy is pretty much like, you've been dealt this hand deal with it and that's easier said than done than to have a a, a a daughter not have a relationship with their mother and their mother not want to have anything to do with them since they were born like that's some fucked up ass shit to feel like your own mother don't love you and want you and they wonder why this girl is kind of fucked up in the head um so king says how she wants to have a family in detroit and her daddy don't want to have no parts of it because he don't want to go back to detroit he don't want to deal with his past and i'm like that's y'all problem now y'all need to go back to detroit deal with this shit as a family and work through this shit so candy meets up with portia to talk one-on-one -on -one, and portia immediately blames the whole situation on candy's team and i'm like bullshit just take responsibility you shouldn't engage in the conversation with phaser i mean it's okay to listen but she shouldn't have been saying that little side sidebar slick shit that she was saying um so Portia says I mean why would I talk about you and uh Portia thinks that Candy has a problem with her because she's friends with Phaedra and I'm like I don't think it's the fact that y'all friends I think it's just the fact that like Candy says that you take sides and you kind of like co-sign everything that Phaedra's saying without coming to me and getting my side of it if you're going to take sides if you want to know what the hell is really going on so um she says that she may, uh, when they talk about Candy, she may ask how her and uh, Phaedra are doing and that whatever Phaedra's answer is her answer. Bullshit. We've seen the clips. Stop it with the bullshit. So Candy says how she feels like she's been uh, taking sides. And she says, um, 
you feel sorry for her and jump on the bandwagon. And Portia says, maybe I do because maybe it seems like I am choosing sides because she needs me a little bit more. And Candy's like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> and she says, I feel like she does. And Candy says, I feel like both y'all are full of shit. And I, I, died, I damn it die when she said that because it was so true. And so Candy says, you are believing the motherfucking hype. And then um, Portia says, she has lost the father of her children. And Candy says, she wanted him to go before he left to go to jail. She wasn't really that sad. And I'm like, thank you. Somebody said it. Like, girl, Phaedra didn't give a fuck about that nigga to go in jail. She didn't need him no more. She got her motherfucking two kids. She got her peach. She don't need that little light-skinned ass nigga no more. So, um... I mean, Candy says in her green screen that Phaedra is an attorney and knows how to manipulate the situation because she likes to uh, keep up her image. And I was like, duh, like who hasn't figured that shit out? And so after that, you know, her and Portia continue to talk. They calm down and try to work things out. And I was like, girl, y'all friendship will not be salvaged because they just talk too much shit. And throw too much side shade. And you throwing shade at her too. Y'all friendship ain't what it is no more. Just leave it alone and just be co-workers on this motherfucking show. So before I leave, I got a rant. I got a, a, a read on my motherfucking spirit and my heart that I've been dying to get to this whole motherfucking video. So over the past week since the last Real Housewives of Atlanta review that I did last week, I have had so many people under the comments under my all t all shade Real Housewives of Atlanta review coming for moi why i don't the fuck know a lot of people seem to have a problem with my opinions and my views on this show that a lot of chicks come underneath the comments you wrong about that you just don't like phaedra you stupid yeah, da, 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 da. what like last time i checked this was the color me pink channel by keisha Irvin, this was my channel with me being allowed to say whatever the fuck I want to say underneath my shit. If you don't agree with the fuck I say, don't agree. I didn't never come on here and ask any of you to agree with anything that I come on here and say. That's a part of life. We're never going to agree. Of course, I don't want you to agree with me. That's why I ask you all to say, I just every video I say, leave your opinions on the show down below not on me and my fucking opinions on the motherfucking television show it's about what you thought as far as this uh episode goes i don't expect for any of you to fucking agree with me because i don't fucking give a fuck enough about this fucking show and about these people this is a fucking review meant to be fun have something to do this is a hobby for me once again this is something fun i don't even get paid to do this shit this is a fucking high B. When I log off of here, I go and do my work, my real job as a best-selling author. If you don't know, Google me, bitch. First of all, these people are so fucking crazy to get underneath these comments going in on me about hoes y'all don't even fucking know. Do you know Phaedra? Do you know Portia? Do you know Candy? Do you know Cynthia? No. These hoes don't give a fuck about you. They just want to fucking review and a motherfucking view on this damn show and the whole point of them being on the show is to get motherfuckers talking motherfuckers to talk about them so they can get ratings they don't give a fuck about you hoes y'all act like Paige, phaedra and Portia them is paying y'all motherfucking rent licking y'all motherfucking pussy watching y'all motherfucking kids my nigga paying that motherfucking light bill putting food in y'all fucking refrigerator what is wrong with you simple ass bitches and i'm so tired and then other bitches come at me this week about the way that i choose to speak me cussing too much Excuse you? I am 35 month, 34, excuse me. Lord will not be I'll turn 35. I'm 34 motherfucking years old. I can talk however the fuck I want to talk. I pay my own damn bills. And then this woman, Ginger, gonna come up and tell us, I mean, this stuff stays on the internet all the time. If you want to get a job, people will look at this. Um, excuse you, ma'am. <clears throat> Let me introduce myself. I'm Keisha Renee motherfucking Irvin. I'm a national best-selling author. Ma'am, I have been a motherfucking self employed for over 12 years since i was 22 i have not worked a nine-to-five job since then i am my own boss i get up and work when i fucking feel like it i have to write two books a year and then other than that i'm lounging in my motherfucking bed watching television while you all are on your computer or at your job doing call center work <laughs> or whatever the fuck you do and no tea no shade to those people that are in call centers but this is what i do for a living i have been blessed enough to watch my child go to school every motherfucking day and 
and be a stay-at-home motherfucking mom and not have to work a nine-to-five job and to have a blessed career as an author, to have my books sold all over the United States, Japan, the UK, Africa, everywhere that you want to be. You can go in your local Walmart or Target and see my books on the shelf. What are you doing with your time, huh? Explain that to me. Oh, and then for this other bitch that came to me, you need to wear some concealer around your eyes because you looking like the walking dead underneath these pictures. You think I give a fuck about how I come on here and look on these goddamn videos? Because all y'all know how I look when it's time to pull it the fuck together when it's time. Other than that, you think I'm going to be wasting my good ass makeup to come on here every motherfucking video being snatched to motherfucking capacity? No, it ain't that serious. I'm not on here to please a bunch of bitches. I ain't trying to fuck none of you hoes. I'm trying to get a nigga. And if a man don't want me for the how the fuck I look in real life, then he don't want me, period. Hoes up here sitting up here worried about the dumbest, stupidest shit in, real, in life 